Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. I'm part of the click, isn't everybody? <laughs> yes! 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 I, I got an idea, yeah. Peter John Cena! Give me a hell yeah! Hey, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Too sweet! following episode is scheduled for one fall, and it is for your listening pleasure. This is In The Click. What's up, everybody? Baby Huey here, and joining me once again is my good brother from the Bullet Cast. It's Philip. How's it going, man? Wait. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? What, Philip? Come on, man. Are you trying to show off right now? Look, dude. I, I, you had it right last week, and then like, what's going on? I don't. Dude, I really don't know. You understand. know, you know, you have like a ten minute intro. No one it's, else on this podcast has a ten minute intro. Look, I do that because I'm very good at this. Okay. Well, please do it yourself then, because I forget I, half the things I, you say. I, I, yeah, we went to a spiel about me being a child actor. That's right. That, that's well, that, yeah, that, la- that, that was last week. That was that was funny. That was la- I mean, but I mean, you have to admit, like my intro is better than Richard's, right? <laughs> well, it depends what he says. I mean, like honestly, when it comes to podcasting, he's a Curtis Axel. I'm a Kurt Henning. Because wow, it's perfect. <laughs> that's a Wale bar for you, Huey. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but no. somebody else is here with us. How you doing, bud? Well, yeah, no, Philip. So please, I, I guess uh, we should let the clicksters know we're not alone tonight. We got a, a third man, brother. Uh, join us, please. I'll let you give the introduction since you were the one who uh, 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 introduced me to him. Ladies and gentlemen, this man used to be a public enemy. Now he's tearing it up within the ropes. He's my tag team partner for the new nation. Yeah, we taking over. Throw up the fist. Ladies and gentlemen. Brian Tronic, the current reigning, defending, undisputed bullet cast champion. His first try, and he became the world champion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brian, how yeah. you doing? Tonight? From the Queen City. Yes, sir. From the Queen City, baby. <laughs> yeah, man. Brian, hey, welcome. Welcome to In the Click. Thank you Thank so you. much for uh, for joining us tonight. So much to get into. We got a lot of clickbait related news to touch on. Uh, we're going to talk some Monday Night Raw. We're going to talk some Dynamite. Uh, but man, no, thank you so much, like I said, for making the time. You come very highly recommended off of Philip, so I will put you over in that sense. So thank you, Philip. And plus, <laughs> I, I listened to last week's episode of your guys' SmackDown review. And of course, first sentence out of Philip's mouth, he throws me under the bus already, saying I don't know how to properly <laughs> introduce him. Look, Come on, Philip. I listen to what you say. Look, I mean, like Brian got it right. Montezzi, who made the bullet cast theme, he got it right. Sidebar, he just sent me the second bullet cast theme. That's going to be dropping next week. I, I, you need to stay tuned for that. Uh-oh. But uh, yeah, man, just as, as long as you throw microphone Messiah in the inter, in the intro, it's cool. I won't even have to do the ten minute intro. That's all we need. That's all. You <laughs> okay, need. you fine with that? All right, all right. N- next time, I'll, I'll I'll start doing it. Yeah, but man. I like introducing this to the bullet cast. Unless you want me to just, I gotta drop one then. See, it becomes too much of a mouthful after a while. The host of the Bullet Cast, the Microphone Messiah, Philip. Boom, that's it. All right. I'll think about it. Let's yeah, put it together. Do, but do the do. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, uh, but Brian, like I said, uh, 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 Philip told me all about you. I, I checked out your stuff. I was thoroughly impressed. I love everything you've been doing. So um, please, you know, if you want to give, give a, look, a little um, summary about Within the Ropes and how can people find you, listen to you. Um, but like from a content standpoint, I love and respect everything you've been doing. Appreciate that, man. I really do appreciate you for having me. <laughs> On the show, <clears throat> I am Brian Tronic, the host of Within the Ropes. You guys can go ahead and uh, find me at Within the Ropes on all your social media platforms. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? You know, look up Within the Ropes podcast on all your wherever you listen to your podcast and things like that. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
<laughs> You're you. welcome. And I'm honored. So, yeah, no, I appreciate you, you coming on. And so, um, and so here's the thing. So whenever we have like someone new come onto the podcast, we have some like basic, simple icebreaker questions. I know I kind of gave you the heads up before we hit the record button tonight, but okay. tr- don't worry. It's not some super over the top, uh, uh, question and answers. Very simple, but it's just a way to kind of get people to know you a little bit. Um, so first question. Okay. Who's your all-time favorite wrestler? Ooh. Uh, I'm going to have to go. Damn. It has to be one. I got to pick one. Yeah. Mine's easy. I mean, you <clears throat> see him right over here. <laughs> see, Stone Cold's my okay. all-time favorite. So that's easy. Um, all-time favorite. I'm going to go with Shawn Michaels. Oh, my God. All-time Is it because of favorite. his birthday today? No. Happy, not birthday. At all. Not- <laughs> Happy birthday, Sean. We love you. Or Happy I love birthday, you. Sean. Yeah, take, take uh-huh. that okay. garbage off. <laughs> I'm wearing my Bret Hart shirt right now on purpose. I, mean, I, least- I literally went through the closet and like I was looking at all my wrestling shirts. Like, okay, what do I need to wear uh, for tonight's recording? Bret Hart. Boom. Perfect. I mean, In honor of Sean's birthday. It's not like you're wearing a Kenny Omega shirt. That's like wearing a trash bag. Wow. But, but, but yeah, I mean, Shawn Michaels, great, great choice. The greatest mm-hmm. in-ring performer of all time. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll absolutely. give him that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, Shawn Michaels. All right. Okay. Um, next question. What's your all-time favorite match to watch? Does that have to be Shawn Michaels? It can be, but just a match that you can always throw it on and just, you know, from beginning to end, you just love it. It never gets old to you. Well, to answer that is going to be extremely easy because it is a Shawn Michaels match. <laughs> okay. uh, Shawn Michaels Undertaker WrestleMania 25. Wow. Okay. That is a match that yes. I can watch over and over and over. Yeah, yes. absolutely. No, I mean, legendary match in so many different ways. Uh, okay, last question. Now, yeah. this is a bucket list in pro wrestling. Um, what is like a pro wrestling bucket list? Something that you want to do in pro wrestling? Either, you know, is there a particular event that you want to go to and watch? Is there something you want to experience? I mean, I know it's very generic, open-ended. For for example, for me, when I first answered that question years ago, I said, I want to go to the Tokyo Dome and see a Wrestle Kingdom in person. That's my own personal uh, bucket list item. Philip, what was yours? Do you remember what yours was? Um... I want to I want to go to the WWE warehouse. I want to be able to take something home. Okay, yeah, awesome choice. I mean, definitely with the the uh, lost was it lost treasures, hidden treasures. Yeah, the hidden treasures. Yeah, um, yeah, that yeah. show is really mm-hmm. like oh my god. The walk into that whole storage unit looks amazing. Just all the cool stuff that's in there. But uh, so Brian, for yourself, is there something like I said you want to experience pro wrestling? Do in pro wrestling, like I said, a bucket list item mm-hmm. that you really want to achieve. Oh man, I probably it it would probably be meeting Vince McMahon. Mm, good call. That's yeah. yeah. That's 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 number one right there for me. Yeah, that's to meet uh, the man. I think yeah. that's everybody's in a way. Sheesh. Yeah, I mean that. I mean, I'm with you. I would love to meet him, shake his hand, just thank him for everything for the years yeah. of entertainment and just experiences and just really. Being slow, so connected to a big part of my life. I mean, his yeah. hands involved in so much of it, and you know his his company. I, I'm with you now. That's a good call, Vince McMahon. Yeah. Now we have not heard that one from uh, from anyone yet. So love that. So that's cool. But uh, uh, so like I said, to all the clicksters out there, you know, fall within the ropes. Um, I noticed you've been like pretty damn active. Like you do reviews right after all the major shows is that right yep, yep. every so, night raw nxt dynamite you even got thursday stuff you get nxt uk impact yep smackdown on friday yeah and then weekends whatever a pay-per-view or something like that if, if, if i'm correct right yep yep damn so you got it all all covered so crazy please, so please yep. you know subscribe to your your podcast uh uh also on social media as well and we'll have all the links in uh, the description as well if you're listening to this right now so man uh so much to get into philip you know there's some weeks where maybe the wrestling news stories it's a little thin not too much going on but dude the last 24 hours have been insane for not one, but two reasons. Um, of course, everyone's talking about CM Punk, Daniel Bryan. Um, 
we'll start with CM Punk and the CM Punk news there, just because I feel like that's not as much going on. Daniel Bryan, there's a lot more to that story. But uh, so CM Punk, it was announced that uh, uh, accordingly, accordingly to a, a report from Fightful that CM Punk has been considering a comeback to pro wrestling with AEW as the front runner. Um, and apparently they've been in conversations for a while now. Um, I have my thoughts about this, Philip. I'll let you start. <laughs> CM Punk, I feel like at least once a year we get reports or rumors of CM Punk coming back to wrestling. And it's been what? How many years now? Six, seven so, years? So it's been seven years, man. Since I rem- he's been I, in the ring. Yeah, I remember that. And it broke my heart. <laughs> but, um, like, I'm just... Until I see him walk out and stand in the ring, I'll believe it to, when I see it. But yeah. apparently this one has a lot more weight than we've seen in recent years. But so please, Philip, yeah, your thoughts on the rumors of CM Punk coming back to wrestling. I mean, I... It, it, it's interesting, and you know, this is something I've hoped for because, like, I mean, you had Austin as like an adolescent. I had CM Punk. You mm, know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. like, I, I I connect with him. Plus, we're both Phillips, and that's a great name. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> look, I I always thought if he were to ever come back, cult of personality would hit, the fans would erupt, and it would be in a WWE setting. That's what I always believed. Yeah. Now, you know, Tony Khan, if he can purchase cult of personality, I'll be fine with this. Um, but look, my, my, th- this is another thing. Like with him and with Daniel Bryan, they have too much talent at AEW. They don't need these guys. They, it, it would be nice to have them to, you know, to boost the ratings and to show like, hey, we're we really play ball. Absolutely. That, that's great. But like I was like, I was kind of upset with Andrade and Malachi going over there because they don't need all these guys. They have too much talent. Use what you have. I, un- I understand what you're trying to do, and that's great. But, you, but use what you have. Yeah, no, uh, I was going to save this just this thought for when we get to more of the Daniel Bryan part of it, the discussion. Um, yeah, if these guys come in, they're going to jump right to the main event scene, take up spots for the homegrown talent that's been coming up in AEW that are now going to get probably pushed back a little bit as far as their time to shine. But I'll, I'll go more into that when we talk about Daniel Bryan stuff. But, but Bryan, for yourself, um, I'm guessing... You're, you're probably a CM Punk fan as well. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, we're all, yeah, CM Punk fans. And so I, I, I do miss seeing him. And I've been, for the last seven years, been, yeah, I've been wanting to see him come back. But as time goes on, my interest or just caring about this has grown thinner and thinner. I'm like, like I said, if he shows up, great. I'll believe it when I see it. Um, it looks like if this is true, if it's going to happen, I mean, where other better place to do it at all out this year in his hometown of Chicago? It will uproar. I mean, we know Chicago loves him. Money in the Bank, 10 years ago now with John Cena, that was a instant classic, that pay-per-view alone. But, but yeah, Brian, your thoughts on CM Punk coming back and potentially with AEW? <sighs> I thought long and hard about this after I saw <laughs> those reports. And, and just look... <clears throat> If he comes back, if he does, because we've been we've been hearing about this for, you know, ever since AEW became a thing, we've been hearing about mm-hmm. the return of CM Punk possibly yeah. coming back. Um, if he does come back, then I'm happy for him. But I'm kind of with Phil when it comes to look, AEW's got a lot of talent. They've got a lot of fresh guys that have been getting a lot of TV time. Guys and girls have been getting over. Um, and with with him coming in, that's going to take up a spot from, say, a hangman or uh, a jungle uh, boy, jungle boy. Exactly. Orange uh, Cassidy, Orange Those Cassidy, two guys that began like a big pushes in recent Darby months. Allen, Darby Allen. Exactly. So mm-hmm. it, it's yeah, I'm with you. It, it's definitely going to be interesting how they're going to use him and. And the dynamic of him and his involvement in, you know, CM Punk is, you know, based on rumors and reports, he is definitely a little bit of a tough person to deal with. So mm-hmm. I kind of worry about maybe the locker room, how the locker room environment is going to be affected with him there. But listen, he's a big name. People have been wanting to see him. And I think he could bring some eyeballs to them. I mean, they've been doing pretty good on their own Wednesday nights ratings wise. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he can help bump them up even a little bit more, then I'm sure it's just, uh, uh, they'll be extra happy with that. Um, I know we'll see what happens. You know, like I said, it, the timing kind of makes sense. If like what, six weeks from now, Labor Day weekend, when all that happens in Chicago, what better place to do it? Me personally, I think, what they should do is so keep in mind, uh, Philip, 
for that week, it's all the events are going to be in Chicago. So that dynamite leading up to all out, uh, the go home show, that's going to be Wednesday night, Chicago, Friday's rampage in Chicago. Then the pay-per-view, what's is that Sunday? I believe yeah. it'd be labor day week. So we have Monday off, but yeah. I mean, I think either debut them either that Wednesday or Friday, get the buzz going. And then people are going to let tune into the pay-per-view on Sunday. And that's where he'll make like his first official, announcement or, or or do his first promo in a ring or something you know what i mean so it's like i think everyone's expecting him to make his surprise return at the pay-per-view but i think it would probably be better to get more uh pay-per-view buys if they have him debut at one of those shows either dynamite or rampage because rampage will have been started by then so i don't know philip do you think that that might be a bit of a better scenario for them that would get some increased pay-per-view buys yeah, yeah, that that would be interesting. And then you 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 make you make announcement. Uh, hear what CM Punk has to say this what well, Saturday or Sunday at All Out. You know, like yeah. so that like okay, I'm, I want to hear what he has to say and so and so and so forth. But uh, yeah, man, I mean this this is interesting. I mean, twenty twenty one, what a time. Yeah, no, it's exciting fan. stuff. Uh, so we were also talking about CM Punk, but yeah, let's talk about Daniel Bryan. That was the other big news. I felt like yesterday afternoon, like lunchtime, it was all about CM Punk. And then literally by dinner time, <laughs> Daniel Bryan news started coming out. And I was like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? Like these two when it rains, it really does. Or yeah, when it rains, it really does pour in this situation here, especially in the wrestling news. Um, so it looks like uh, what was it? Bodyslam.net was actually the first one to report. But uh, it looks like they're reporting that Daniel Bryan is locked in, and has 100 percent signed a deal with AEW already. Um Apparently, the reasoning behind this is because uh, Daniel Bryan, or I guess he's going to be going by Brian Danielson. Uh, he wanted to work last day. Stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> Just real name. Stupid name. But where he wants to work less dates for comparable money. He wanted the, the ability to work with Japan and wanted to have creative input on his character, all of which AEW is willing to give him. Uh, there's a little bit more to that. Let's see. Now, I. I I don't know if I should say spoiler alert just because of what the attentive plans are to use him. Um, the Arthur Ashe Stadium, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it looks like the plans is he'll make his official AEW debut September 22nd when AEW has their show in New York City at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. Um, so That's a oh. slap in the face to Vince. <laughs> In New York to have one of his biggest stars in the last what Ugh. ten years debut in his territory? <laughs> Come on, man! T- Tony Khan knows what he's doing, and exactly. I'm going to read you guys a tweet because people are kind of upset that he's even going to think about going over there. Okay, I'm a re- Twitter's great. I love Twitter <laughs> for moments like this. This is from Ms. Mark Junior. Mm-hmm. And he says, now that he's gone, I think all of us WWE fans can admit Daniel Bryan was never that good of a wrestler to begin with. Ooh. No mic skills or personality, bland with no emotion. He was carried in big matches by superior wrestlers like The Miz and Triple H. The Miz? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who said that? Phil, you wrote that up yourself, didn't you? I know. <laughs> I, did, I, 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 I can send it to you, bro. Fizz, Fizz, <laughs> bro uh, uh, Phil's reporting using a burner account or something. No, this isn't me. This is not me. Don't uh, say that, guys. So, okay, uh, uh, Brian, you know, yeah. like... I mean, this this is a big deal, and this is one that has me extremely excited. Like, the CM Punk one, I'll be happy for as well, but the Daniel Bryan one, Bryan Danielson, that's really exciting news. And that is, you know, I was trying to think about this, was this might be up there, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, Hogan, WCW, Kurt Angle, the TNA. Like, I, I kind of think it's that level of power shift maybe or talent going to the to opposing company but yeah your thoughts on uh brian danielson potentially jumping ship and working with aew yeah it 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 hurts (laughs) it hurts a lot i mean again i it's nice to know that aew is around um and that he can go and if there's some dream matches out there that he mm-hmm. wants to have that he'll be able to have that. I think him going to AEW is a huge pickup or would be a huge pickup for AEW. Mm-hmm. Um, he's kind of like that guy you can just plug and he can have a match with anybody right away, you mm-hmm. know, and it'll be 
close to a five star match, no matter who he goes in there with. So I, I think in comparison, Punk Brian, I think Brian's obviously more valuable in mm-hmm. terms of putting on those five star matches. CM Punk is more like your 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 name. He's going to be the one to sell the tickets and you know the the mic master and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean exactly yeah 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 it's um it's going to be interesting as far as. God, I think who would have thought, you know, in, in 2021 that you know, where we'd be talking about CM Punk and uh, Daniel Bryan officially leaving WWE, signed with AEW. It, it, it's still just mind boggling. You know, Brock Lesnar is a free agent. I mean, I really doubt he's going anywhere other than WWE just from a money standpoint. But it, yeah. it just it, I, I still can't wrap my head fully around it. Um I just wonder long term though what's the benefits is um I guess okay before we kind of maybe dig a little bit deeper into this I will just want to add so uh Dave Meltzer uh reported last night on Wrestling Observer Radio that uh one of the biggest factors of Daniel Bryan signing with AEW could be due to their relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling mm-hmm. so that seems to be the number one reason I think Daniel Bryan really wants to work with New Japan Pro Wrestling and therefore sign with whatever U.S. company that has a working relationship. And keep in mind, you know, we heard a couple months ago that uh, Nick Khan, WWE president, was having talks with New Japan and WWE potentially was going to maybe try to set something up with New Japan, WWE working together, which was kind of shocking because WWE is so big on their own. It's like they don't need to work with anyone. Um, but it was kind of exciting and it shows that they really were kind of interested on trying to please Daniel Bryan and trying to do what they can to resign him. And I was like, wow, this is really, really cool. I mean, the Daniel Bryan has that much pool that yeah. he can change, but now apparently, you know, um, uh, uh, I think Wrestle Votes, uh, let's see, Wrestle Votes tweeted out earlier today regarding the Daniel Bryan rumor. Since I've got a ton of questions on it, I don't have many direct AEW contacts. However, I did ask my WWE contacts when's the last time Bryan's name has been brought up within creative or, or even talked about. Uh, uh, quotes, months was the answer. So that's that, meaning maybe they knew Daniel Bryan was gone. So they're not even bring up his name anymore and trying to think of future plans with him. Also, I think there was a rumor like there, he's not even going to be really used for merch ideas for the new year and just kind of come up. So it looks like they're already kind of writing him off and trying to move on from not thinking about who would have thought that. <laughs> um, but interesting though, Brian, like uh, your thoughts on one, it looks like new Japan is pretty firm in working with, uh, AEW, um, but you know you look at AEW and what they've been able to do as far as ha- working relationships with uh, New Japan, Impact Wrestling, yeah. um, AAA, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Philip, is there any other uh, major promotions? It seems like they're all kind of interconnected. NWA, it's, yeah, NWA, um, Stardom, for you know because of the Joshi's. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah. So it just seems like. AEW seems like a cool opportunity um, for him to go work. I mean, you know, for Brian, like, I, I'm curious for you, um, like, you know, your thoughts on maybe him, you know, working with New Japan and like, um, you know, what else could, could we see from Daniel Bryan, you know, working with AEW? Like, what's what could this potentially lead to? Yeah, I I, I think that that was, if anything, the deal breaker. If if there was anything that that could get him to sign a contract with AEW, I think that was probably probably it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all know that he wants to go to Japan. He wants to work with guys in Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure Wrestle Kingdom with a Daniel Bryan on there is is everything. I mean, you know, everyone. If you thought Jericho was big, I know. Man, or uh, um, oh, Philip, what's the? Oh my God, I'm totally spacing the summer tournament. Um, G one, G one. Oh Dude, boy, imagine if he entered that, wins a briefcase or something. There, I mean, yeah. oh, it's uh, it's uh, here's my interpretation is okay. Daniel Bryan, he takes pro wrestling very seriously. It's almost like one of those like serious artists who takes like their craft super yep. serious, either like actual painter or a musician. And so with him, I think he's like, okay, listen, for like the last 11 years, I've dedicated my life to WWE. 
he's done everything you could do there. He's probably faced everyone there that we would care to see him see. He's probably like, listen, I have a second chance at life. And when I mean life is pro wrestling life career, you know, he's able to come back from his uh, uh, retirement. Yeah. So he's probably like, all right, I have a second chance at this. I, I and I've only have so many years left before I officially become too old and beat up that I can't do this anymore. Yeah. What else do I want to accomplish? And it's like, okay, do I stay with WWE and just face the same guys again, or do I go out there and just have fun these last who? Because I think he's forty years old, so you know maybe the next five years he wants to go just do things that he hasn't done before, face people he hasn't done before, these dream matches as as you mentioned earlier. It's it seems like a really fun opportunity that's really you know getting him like super engaged and like refreshing for him um to me that that's that's exciting to have the opportunity he let his contract ride out and so he's able to walk away and just go do this and i'm sure he's made plenty of money in wwe i mean even when he was retired he was the gm of smackdown so he still worked for them yeah. uh and, and it makes you wonder like did he stick around wwe this long for his wife for for brie bella and their relationship with like e and the, the reality shows so like he probably was like being the good husband and like being the good company employee working for wwe that that way uh keep things happy with his wife and their relationship working relationship but apparently like total bellas total demons that's all done right uh, i don't watch them regularly Phil i Bar- think i think so they haven't there hasn't there's not a new season of yeah. it yeah yeah, yeah. So I just imagine for him, he's like, this is it. I have a fresh, clean slate right now. It's like, what do I want to accomplish right now? So, um, I mean, think about it. You know, could he sign with AEW, but then immediately start working with New Japan? Could he yeah. go down to Impact and just show up in Impact Zone one day? Man. Could he, yeah, go down to, to Mexico and like AAA, do something down there? I know in the past he was like a big CML fan, mm-hmm. um, but I mean, AEW is more working with AAA now. Um, Philip, is there, <laughs> why, why are you shaking your head, man? Shouldn't you be optimistic about this? No, absolutely. Look, this man. Wow. Well, three months ago was just in the main event of WrestleMania with a Hall of Famer and our tribal chief. Hell, he just <laughs> main evented SmackDown with our tribal chief, and he's going to piggyback off being in the ring with the head of the table to go over to the land of vanilla midgets. Are you kidding me? He got stacked. He put Roman over. He did his job. He was a good employee on the way Nobody out. Nobody puts Roman over. Don't ever say that. Don't, he don't put act. him over. <laughs> well, no. Maybe, here, maybe. Okay. Well, no. Next. Keep in mind. No, that's a good, good point. So, listen. He... I'm kind of worried, you know, from WWE standpoint, guys like Cesaro and uh, um, Drew Gulak, those were guys that he was big fans of. And when he was kind of more involved in the creative standpoint last year and early this year, Cesaro would turn into a main eventer by May. And Drew Gulak was doing a lot of stuff with Daniel Bryan. It was getting some more TV time. Ever since he's been gone, those guys have fallen. Drew Gulak's back in the 24-7 title scene. Yep. Cesaro, in two months, is falling back down the mid-card, taking on Alpha Academy, which, okay, yep. cool, good for him. Um, he, he was he was doing a lot of pushing for yeah. uh, to work with a lot of the – the two or five get live guys as well. And if you, mm-hmm. if you really look at it, a lot of those guys are gone. Now, a lot of the guys he really wanted to work with don't even work for WWE anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's amazing in his time creatively, how much pool he had and what he was able to accomplish and just yeah. the rub. He was able to give a lot to these guys. And, you know, I feel bad for Cesaro. I mean, I'm sure they're happy for Daniel Bryan, but they're probably like, crap, he, He's man. being selfish. He's being selfish. Let's be realistic. Selfish? He's, he's being, How's he being selfish? He's being, he's being selfish. Cesaro, Gulak, and the other guys he was pushing for have to suffer because he wants to wrestle because he wants to wrestle trash wrestlers like Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay. That's, that's oh, my just God. That's Are you just Vince's it. son and you're just, you yeah. haven't told us? <laughs> It, it, it was me. <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, I'm, I'm kidding. I, I, I love Daniel Bryan. I'm gonna keep calling him Daniel Bryan. Yeah, that, yeah, that's it's his easier. name forever. But uh, look, man, I'm, I'm, you know, look, I'm happy for him. You know, he like if you watch Total Divas on a pretty regular basis, and I popped in and out, but the episodes that Bryan was on, he was talking about wrestling, just kind of understanding his mind for this art form and this craft. You love it. You love to see it. And, yep. uh, hey, man, look, I mean, him versus Jay White, give me that. If he pops up at Impact, him versus Josh Alexander, give me that. Yeah. Give me all that. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, it, 
book it, man. Well, and but the other thing too is my only concern is yeah, with AEW, you're gonna get the haters complaining. Oh, they're just signing another former WWE guy. Well, keep in mind, WWE for the last ten plus years was the only major company to work at outside of TNA, and they hoarded so much talent, and so. And this, and they were hoarding the best talent, arguably around the world. And so, yeah, once these guys leave, yeah, the odds of someone you sign a free agent is someone that came from WWE. It's pretty high chance. So, I mean, whatever. But I don't dread on that part. But, but I, I am concerned though about AEW because they were trying to for so long. For beginning of 2019, they were trying like we're the alternative. We're something different. We're non WWE. We're going to have our own homegrown talent, guys who never worked in WWE, or uh, or we're going to develop new stars. And you saw that, but now you see this shift in they're bringing the WWE guys, and those are the ones starting to get the pushes again. And the guys that were getting signed early on in early 2019, some of them don't even see on TV anymore. Are, are they even going to get any TV time? Are they going to get pushed uh, or, or you know, push back like you said, Brian. You know, we talked about yeah, you know, Jungle Boy, Darby yeah. Allen, uh, um, Orange Cassidy. Guys who were getting big pushes in the last year, of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I'm really concerned, you know, for AEW and all these guys. Like, I wonder long term, are we going to see like potentially these young talent just start leaving AEW? Yeah. Well, well I want to. I want to say this real quick. Um. They are signing a lot of WWE talent. I mean, I just said that. But on the bright side, mm-hmm. in TNA, like when Kurt Angle and Tr- Christian went over there, like within two months they were the world champion over there. Mm-hmm. That's not happening, which is good. But, uh, yeah, man, like, look, if, if they get Punk and Brian, seriously, man, no more. Really, just no more. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the last call. Yeah. Like, I, I think – if they sign these two, I think that's it because you had Moxley, you got Tommy in now or Malachi Black, you got Miro, uh, Andrade, Andrade. If you had seen Punk and Daniel Bryan, I mean, I mean, like that's it. Like, there's no one else. I, I I don't think that they're like the last two like big free agents that they could sign. Yeah, After that, what if they what if they really got Brock? <clears throat> Dude. That would change the game. That would change the game. If they you know, got I honestly, I honestly feel like if they do sign uh, Brian and Punk, just I, like okay, it's over now, right? Like, all right, that it, that that's it. Now, can we just enjoy the shows now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it, it's it's over. Like AEW is going to be fine. WWE is going to be fine. AEW is going to be fine now. I just wonder though, like. How much of a change will this be? Like, will AEW start getting like raw ratings numbers? Will these two guys elevate AEW enough that they'll start averaging, like I said, raw numbers or maybe do better in raw and ratings? Cause they're kind of getting closer now. I yeah. just wonder, will business wise, will they really make a huge impact? No pun intended for impact wrestling, but, um, I don't know. I, I, you, you get the hardcore fans. They're going to tune in. But as the casual fan, are they going to be tuning in for these two guys? I don't know. Yeah. I, it, it's That's something that I'm, I'm curious to see because I saw um, uh, uh, one of the guys from the Matt Man podcast. He was tweeting out stats of like, listen, the reason they're bringing back WWE's bringing back Goldberg and some of these other names, John Cena, they need the casual fans. And. AEW, they're averaging like that million, 900,000 million plus mark. That's their dedicated audience to tune in every week. But in order to kind of elevate even higher, you got to get more of those casual fans. And so I just wonder if Daniel Bryan, CM Punk can really do that. Um, it'd be interesting, man. I, I'm excited. I mean, I, like I said, these are all rumors until we see either one of them walking down out of the, the, the tunnel, yeah. you know, out of the grill position, walking down the ramp in the ring. I'll believe it when I see it, but it's fun to speculate. It's fun to guess what could happen. I mean, I'm all for it. Cause then, you know, Philip, it would push your dad, Vince to uh, uh, a whole new level of competition. <laughs> he's got like, you know, Monday night wars 2.0. He's like, dude, like they have some stacked talent now. Or- like he, or what? Or what if this is all just a giant work? Brian <laughs> wins the title and he spray paints the WWE logo on. Boom. Wow, <laughs> you crazy man! <laughs> yeah, like he throws in a trash can or something. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's exactly, <laughs> exactly, brother. <laughs> or what? Remember was it? Uh, Philip, I don't know if you know Brian. You probably remember like the rumor of remember when Vince Russo left WWE and he went to WCW. Yeah, and there's the the uh, conspiracy theory that he went over there just to sabotage WCW. Yeah. When he was there, it was terrible. Well, booking. it worked. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Two, 99, 2000, 2001, WCW just tanked and yeah. RIP to them. But. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it makes you wonder. This is all work, brother. Danny Bryan's just going to be a spy. Go over the AEW, just start putting bad matches on or something. That's what you want, Philip. Apparently, Jeez. I mean, look, man. I'm, I'm just saying he's selfish. He was in there with the tribal chief, and now he wants to piggyback off of that success. Why would you do that? <laughs> well, nonetheless, I'm excited. We're all excited. We hope it happens because, like I said, it'll just. Give us a lot of fresh, fun stuff to talk about on our podcast, and uh, it's gonna be good, man. I, if this all happens, yeah, I'm I'm super stoked for it. So uh, yeah, take my money now already. I'm all for it. Take it. I, I need I need some new shirts. I can't wear the Kenny Omega shirts all the time now, right, Philip? Yeah, I don't. Why would you wear them in the first place? I need why would some, you even buy them? I need some Brian Danielson shirts from ProWrestlingTees.com. Right? Oh boy, that's what you're saying. That's what you want me to upgrade to. Is his merch even still in WWE shop? I don't know. I I haven't checked. Uh, that's that's a that's a thing. I, I ordered if, some if shirts. It's still, if it's still there, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know, right? Check it out. Uh, um, all right, so let's get into uh, talking about uh, this week's episodes of, uh, of Raw and Dynamite. So first things first, we'll talk about Monday Night Raw. We're not going to go through all the matches and stuff. We're just going to go through some of the big highlights from this show. And I mean, God, like there was like big four takeaways, but I think. You know, for the sake of keeping it easy, we'll just go with what happened first. Uh, after Money in the Bank or at the end of the main, main event, we saw the return of John Cena comes out. Huge pop. I mean, like Austin level pop. That's how I heard it as um, comes into the ring, you know, waves his hand in front of Roman Reigns. <laughs> Doesn't even say anything. That's it. Then within the hour after the show ended, they tweeted out he's going to be uh, on Raw um, coming out to Monday Night Raw, kicking off the show. And, uh, you know, Brian, you know, I'd love to get your thoughts on, uh, John Cena. I, I think you tweeted out, you, you're asking just on Twitter on Monday night, just people's thoughts on the promo. But here's what you thought of John Cena making his big return to Monday Night Raw and just, uh, starting to show off. Felt like normal again. <laughs> yeah. Felt like it felt, it felt like WWE again, man, just yeah. to hear him out there. It's almost like he's just leading the, uh, it's cliche to say leading the troops, but he's leading the companies. He's, he's the man. Yeah. He's the face, you know? So he's back out there doing what's right, doing what he knows. Uh, you know, obviously saying that Reigns ain't, Roman Reigns ain't the guy. He's not <laughs> as over as he thinks he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I loved it, man. It was, it was fun to see. Philip, it was interesting because I think. You know, let's be honest. This is a feud that's made for SmackDown because of Roman Reigns' involvement, but it got started on Raw. I, I wonder if they did this because, listen, USA Network reportedly was a little upset with WWE as far as, um, you know, the Hell in a Cell thing happened on SmackDown. That's why Raw got a last minute Hell in a Cell match on Monday. Um, they're also upset with. Uh, um. Oh, what was it? You know, USA was like felt like Fox was getting more favoritism lately, or like bigger matches or situations. And so I wonder, like, yeah, we'll give you John Cena, even though this is a storyline made for SmackDown. We'll let him come out and just get the ball rolling. Uh, I enjoyed the promo. It's he's so damn good on the microphone. I mean, for a guy we haven't seen like in a year and a half. Uh, you know, since the Firefly Funhouse at WrestleMania, it was just good to see him again. I'm one with Brian. It just felt normal again. It felt, you know, like the last 10 years, <laughs> like back, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, it was just great to see him, but, um, I felt like, he, like half of it was just him trying to amp up the crowd, like, hey, welcome back, everyone. Hey, hey, just kept putting the crowd over. Uh, but what'd you think of him, uh, saying Roman Reigns was a big asshole? Uh, um, well, first of all, let me talk about his return. Yo, bro, I felt like I was eight years old again. Ah, I mean, like, God, you, yeah. you, no, dude, you had Hogan, bro. I had John Cena. I, yeah. I was, I was telling my mom, you can't see me. You know what I'm saying? Dropping the fine knuckles. Eight up. years old. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait. What year would be eight years old for you? Just put in the context. Two thousand what five? Right. I oh believe. my God. Two thousand four or five. 
or Are something. You serious? I or wait, no. I was a okay, junior. Okay, I feel like I was college. nine years old. Two thousand five. I was nine years old. Yeah, there we go. Still, I was a junior in college, so like I was already. <laughs> yeah. <Damn>. But yeah, <laughs> they can make me feel old, man. Then, yeah, keep, man. Keep I, going. Keep going. I, I just I I felt like a kid again. Like I was like, oh my god. You know, I loved it. My homie, my homie was in attendance for Money in the Bank. He said it's the loudest pop he's ever heard, and he nice. was with okay. me at Double or Nothing. He said that one pop was louder than that whole show. Okay. That's how massive it was in the promo. I mean, seeing it like he. He's he's just good at this, you yeah. know. Yeah. Like he can, he's he's so quick up there, man. Like mm-hmm. I, I love it. Now, of course, a lot of it was, "Hey, welcome back." What brought me back was you guys. And then he stepped into into business a little bit, and you know, seeing him when he's or quirky or whatever, like the thing he did with Riddle, like okay, haha. But when he like when he's serious, like I'm like okay, yeah, I, I can mess with this John Cena. It's interesting though. He said, "Listen, sure, I can go after the title and you know break the record." Um, but he said, like, I miss seeing you guys. I miss being here. And I was like, if you really think about it, okay, Firefly Funhouse with Bray. So that was what, 15 months ago. So we haven't seen him in 15 months, but even before that, we really didn't see him for like a year. So I'm like, in the last two, two and a half years, we hardly really seen John Cena much on TV. So it was just like, it just felt so cool to see him again and just really embrace it. Uh, but it's interesting. I was a little disappointed. He did not like really explain how to get out of the Firefly Funhouse. I thought he was going to give us like a little fun answer. Be like, I don't know, Bray released me or something. I was just kind of right. hoping like, you know, kayfabe it somehow. <laughs> give me a something. little like, explanation. Um, but uh, Brian, what do you think of? Uh, so when he started wrapping up, he said, hey, we'll continue this on SmackDown. Uh, and then he's like on with the show. And then Riddle comes down. And dude. I thought he put over Riddle so much here. I, I mean, I laugh at the bro, 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 yeah. bro. I mean, what'd you think of that whole interaction? I know that humor might not be for everyone, but what'd you think of the two of them interacting? I thought it was great. I thought it, it was kind of in, in, in some way him putting Riddle over. Yeah. Um, and then again, seen as that guy who can do these things and like the funny things and make it funny like make you like it like some people may not like riddle but him interacting with cena obviously Mm -hmm. people are gonna laugh at that people are gonna (laughs) want to see that and they don't have a wwe doesn't have enough of that so again it felt like i said felt like normal felt like wwe again cena making the jokes obviously with, with with the new fresh younger up and coming talent whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. it, it it just felt good yeah <laughs> it's just the memes that came out after like oh they're they're like a singing duo now and stuff like that it's just it was a lot of fun the best one was bros to men by uh, I think ryan <laughs> papola oh my god and, uh, I was like, yo, give this dude the book. <laughs> Bros to men. Man, Bros that's awesome. to men, bro. I um, was like, that, that's the greatest tweet I've ever seen. <laughs> so, like, uh, we'll get into a couple of other, the big takeaways. I I will admit, this Raw, though, is great seeing the fans again. It was the first Raw with the return of fans. But I was a little disappointed, though, just a lot of rematches. I mean, uh, uh, we saw Riddle with the Viking Raiders take on AJ Styles, Omos, Omos. And John Morrison, I'm guessing it, this is going to lead to Riddle, Randy Orton versus AJ and Omos at SummerSlam. That's what I'm hoping for. Maybe that's I hope so. And then I hope Riddle and Randy Orton <clears throat> win the tag titles there on that big stage and get that big pop. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, but Jackson Riker, Elias, again, once again, like Riker, is he trying to be the baby face? I have, don't care about him at all. But like I said, we'll power through this. Natty, Tamina versus Nia and Shayna. Um, they lost Nia and Shayna, and they dumped Reggie Reginald, and then Reginald's the new twenty four seven champion. <laughs> Philip, are you uh, are you happy with this new career change for uh, or direction for I mean, uh, Reginald? It sounds like there's an opening. <laughs> oh, free! <laughs> you like Nia? You love Nia? Nia? My number is five one zero five one seven. DM me for the rest. Wow. All right, all right, hey man, shoot nah, your shot, uh, man. Hey, you know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I, I I got that Kobe three pointer. You feel me? Nah, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Reginald. Dan. This I'm I'm happy for him. I mean, he's not he's no Peter Rosenberg is 24 seven champion, but he'll do. Well, no, I'm just saying with Reginald, 
okay, if he's not going to be like a manager, this is, I think just, it's something different. Fret keep and it kind of refreshes the twenty four seven title. Even though I think that title should just go away completely, but at least it gives him something creative to do. And now he'll be doing all these flips and getting you know away from all the other challengers. Sidebar: Before they get rid of the twenty four seven title, I want somebody to take it seriously. I want somebody to have a serious run with it for no reason. Just like actually defend it in the ring. It yeah, looked be, like it looked like Riddick Moss was going down yes, that path. That's right. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And just be like a serious badass with it, and then they can get rid of it. And then we saw Sheamus uh, defend the U.S. title against Humberto Carrillo again. <laughs> um, so next up, though, we saw uh, Bobby Lashley MVP in the ring, uh, cutting a promo. Just you know how they beat up everyone took out everyone and then all of a sudden you know the camera was zoomed in on lashley's face and all of a sudden you see like these green lights start going off and then boom the big return of keith lee so happy i god it's been like six months he's been gone um but brian man like your thoughts on finally seeing keith lee back on monday night raw uh i will admit i'm still bummed he doesn't have his nxt theme song because I think for his big return would have been really cool. The bask in his glory. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, you know, his newer music doesn't hit as well yet, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, your thoughts on yeah, just Keith Lee making his big return. I thought it was cool, man. Um, I kind of wish that they would be a little more transparent about the situation and what happened. Yeah. There was rumors out there saying that Vince and Bruce, uh, uh, they sent, they sent him home. They said he needed to lose weight. I mm-hmm. saw out there. And then there was sent rumors saying that he w- was injured, um, which is a little more believable because I thought r- during the match, he looked, he didn't look a bit, uh, he, he didn't have that quickness that he normally has. He was still quick, mm-hmm. but he wasn't as quick. He looked um, bigger. He, he did he look so? bigger. Okay, I feel so, like the gut was protruding a little bit more. I mean, I mean, my, really? mine, mine protrudes too. But uh, hey, preach yeah. to the choir. On that <laughs> <Yeah. one. laughs> no, but I, I thought the reason why he was gone because they wanted to trademark his name. Oh yeah, oh, I, really? I heard something like that too. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, it was a good match. I mean, it wasn't super long, but he put up a good fight. I was just a little bum. It's like he's from Texas, even though he's not from Dallas. He's like up from up north, I believe, but. You know, I would think you're making a big return in your home state. They would have given him a different match for him to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he did take on the WWE champion. So, I mean, that's a good prestige spot to be in. But just to lose, I was a little bum. Um, I don't know, Philip. I mean, our, our, I guess I'm just happy he's back. I am, like I said, I'm, I'm upset that I wish he would have won the match and actually uh, maybe had just good competitive match and just reestablish him. Hopefully, they'll just reestablish him now. But, you know, after the match, we see Bobby Lashley in the ring and, like, they're just saying, like, no one, they beat everyone. Uh, all of a sudden, we hear, do, 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 do. I can't do it the proper <laughs> voice, but, <laughs> but we see the return of Goldberg. What you think, yeah. man? Your yeah, boy man. Goldberg. I mean, like in, at ninety eight, you you loved Goldberg, right? <laughs> Dude, I, I I was in middle school, high school, man. When when Goldberg you know made his debut, I, I July sixth, nineteen ninety eight. Dude, I live. We lived through that. We I. You know what I was doing that, on July that streak? <laughs> I was doing on July sixth of nineteen ninety eight. Wait, so I'll be twenty three. You're probably crapping your pants in a diaper, right? Mm-hmm. Am I right? Mom, July 6, 1998, what was I doing? <laughs> Eating some Gerbers, right? Something like that. See, okay, I'm right. You were like, what, <laughs> two years go. old? Yeah. I was, was in middle school or high school. No, I was, yeah, I was absolutely mad about to be a freshman in high school. Look, anyway, I, sorry. I, I, I said this earlier on the bullet cast. I pre- look, I appreciate Goldberg. He's a Hall of Famer. You guys know I love Hall of Famers. Yeah. yeah. You know that. When he came back and beat Brock, utter shock. Yeah. But look. Once he beat KO, that's when people were like, oh, my God, what are we doing here? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's been that ever since. You know, he's come back. He's had two title runs. Um, the thing with Braun, which, you know, that was just to kind of get through whatever we were going through in the performance center. He came back and Russell Drew. Look, the point is, like, we know he's not going to win the championship. And that's another thing. If he doesn't win, he's not going to be credible anymore. Yeah, I was just thinking he's on a losing streak, right? Lost to Drew at Royal. Yeah, Rumble. like the last one, the last win Braun. he had was against what, Ziggler. No, oh, oh no, the Fiend. When the he Fiend. beat the Fiend in Saudi Arabia. Well, he, he well, well, no, he lost to Drew at Royal Rumble. Lost yeah, to Braun. Lost, 
And then he, and then. Mm. But did he have, did, was Ziggler and, in between that? No, no, he wasn't. Was Ziggler before? So, Ziggler was before. I think. Ziggler two, was two matches a year. 20, Okay. Ziggler was SummerSlam 2019. Gotcha. Okay. And then we didn't okay. see him again until he until he beat the Fiend in Saudi Arabia. Gotcha. Which okay. Apparently, we're not supposed to talk about. But, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, he's on a yeah. losing streak. I mean, I'm trying to see the point of this. Like, what's the point? Of, I I I want a gold. I mean, sorry, Brock Lesnar. I mean, maybe they're saving Brock Lesnar for a later date and time. Uh, but Brian, like, I I'm I'm optimistic because. For Goldberg, I feel like this is just a stepping stone for a bigger story. And that bigger story involving Big E and the Money in the Bank briefcase and potential championship opportunity for him. I feel like Goldberg just being brought in, contract, he's required two matches a year. So we got his first one at Royal Rumble. This will be his second one at SummerSlam. I feel like him and Bobby are going to have a very short match, probably very short like with Drew. I imagine, you know, Bobby should win and just dominate, reestablish him as this just top WWE champion for the company and therefore setting him up for for Big E to get uh, a big his first title win. Do you think that's kind of maybe the whole point of this Goldberg is just to help put Big E over down the road? Oh, yeah, definitely. I agree with that. I think that this is just. Hey, we got to get we have to get Bobby Lashley back in that dominating mode Mm -hmm. that he was in prior to the girls and the champagne. (laughs) I mean, the story that's being told with that is phenomenal, in my opinion. But I think that the Goldberg win will not only put him in that unstoppable mode, Mm -hmm. but then it'll it'll make the win with Big E that much bigger. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. He he just he just beat the guy that 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 put away Goldberg. That's beat Drew. That beat his buddies. Yeah. You know. Um. Are, and honestly, arguably, he could be one of the one of the one of the best title reigns in WWE. I don't know in the last. I, I would say at least five years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at you know, least before before after CM Punk being gone. I'm. I mean, a name that's not Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to say it's Bobby Lashley. Yeah, and that's the thing. Listen, I, I love Drew McIntyre. Philip, you know, he's a friend of the show. Six times on the podcast. Right, Philip? Are you Drew bragging? McIntyre. Are you bragging now? Yeah, just, I'm sorry. There's a little name <laughs> drop right there. You, you, you want to pick it up for me? Yeah. But, but anyway, I'm so, so hey, I'm saying <laughs> watch the video interview on, on the YouTube channel in the click in YouTube, but the, what I'm gonna getting at is okay. For, like I said, I, I love Bobby Lashley, those title reign, and just how dominant he's been. And finally, at 45 years old, he is now the champion that we've been wanting for the last like 15 yeah. years. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, this long term story of him becoming this super dominant champion, taking <laughs> out the other two members of the New Day, Big E now with the money to bank bank briefcase. He could come to Raw and go after, get revenge on behalf of his friends and get his first WWE championship. Amazing story right there. I mean, he's on SmackDown right now, but Roman's not losing that title anytime soon. I don't want him to fail uh, briefcase cash in. Raw makes much more easier. There is the built-in story. Um, So that's, I think, the scenario they need to go with. Um but like, I wonder would they do the cash in at SummerSlam? Like, could they do it in that same night and get the pop, or do you save it for a bigger moment? Um, I don't know. Like, that's you know creative for them to yeah, decide that. Like, for what's, sure. the, what's the better scenario? But, but Brian, <clears throat> you kind of touched on this. Like, Bobby Lashley, amazing title run. Give WWE credit between Bobby Lashley as WWE champion, Roman as Universal champion. They've been both built up as studs, dominant forces, and I just love how how much respect they've been showing both their their top championships. Say what you want to say about creative for WWE over the years, whatnot. This time period right now, I love that they are in order to be WWE champion. You you are literally the baddest person on that roster. Oh, yeah. I, so I'm just you know that's my own observation. Like I think it's just so cool how how much respect they've been showing both those titles. Is that oh, yeah. safe to say? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, so it's uh, – no, it, it's cool, man. So, I mean, 
Oh, if Big E, like, could this happen with the draft or could he just show up? I don't know. We'll see what happens with that storyline. But I think the point of Goldberg coming in is just to add more heat to Bobby <clears throat> and therefore add to more of the impact of Big E potentially cashing in. So, all right. Uh, two more things for Raw would touch on. <laughs> probably, the, probably the number one thing everyone was reacting to, but I wanted to save it for later on. Was the debut of NXT champion Karen Cross Phillips already making faces right now? Um, early in the show, they, they, had the, they had the graphic up saying Karen Cross is going to make his raw debut. Why are you clapping already? Um, and then, you know, towards the end of the third hour, he comes out, has a match with Jeff, Matt with Jeff Har- uh, match with Jeff Hardy and loses in less than two minutes. Um, Man, there's a lot to break down here from his entrance, Jeff Hardy's music, the match itself. Philip, we'll start with the positive. Uh, your thoughts on Jeff Hardy coming out with uh, his old but newer theme song. Is that the right no way to? No more words. That's the name of the Bulletcast episode today, man. That was great. I loved it, man. I was, I was, I was, I was 12 years old doing the whole dance to no more words, cutting up my mom's socks and making the armbands. I loved it. I mean, no more words. Like that's that's a bop. That is a banger of a theme song. I love it. I love it. And um, can I just can I just bury Carrying Cross now? Um, sure. Let's. Okay. Well, <laughs> no. Okay. How about this, Brian? Your thoughts <clears throat> on Carrying Cross entrance or lack of an entrance that we've seen compared to NXT? It was it was extremely underwhelming. Uh, aside from Scarlet not being there. He just didn't look like he knew what he was doing, where to go, where to look. I mean, they didn't even you could have at least added some fire, some pyro, something to the insurance. I mean, it's completely it's done. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> Is this this might be the worst main roster debut ever from NXT from NXT town. I hate to say it, yeah, but like Compared to everyone else, I mean, Kevin Owens arguably probably the best one, but everyone since then have been, you know, take them a while to 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 find their footing. I mean, Keith Lee, you know, he beat Randy Orton, I think was on Raw one episode. Um, but yeah, dude, this is not good. Like, I, you know, it's been a few days now since Raw happened this week, and I've been trying to process <laughs> it still. Um but yeah, like we saw the dark matches and like the the tapes of main event that he was working a couple weeks ago and how stripped down his entrance was. And I was like, okay, maybe they're just testing it out or they're they're saving for the good stuff for live TV. No, it was exactly what we saw on main event and the dark match. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, no, Scarlet. Scarlet adds so much. And the entrance is amazing. It's a part of his whole gimmick. They yep. didn't do any of that. It was just, it was terrible. Um, Philip, go ahead, please. <laughs> Bury him. Wherever you want to do that. Dude, like, I just, like, I just, I just kind of laughed. And, I mean, Brian here, he hit it right on the head, dude. Like, he, he didn't look like where he knew where to go. He looked like a deer in headlights. He really yeah. did. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, like, the only pe- reason why people really tolerate him is for Scarlet. And she wasn't even there. I she really think she could be Sable 2.0. I mean, yeah, she, uh, let let the smoke show reign supreme on her own. Like, the, <laughs> like you know, just when, whenever you want to mess with a real man, honey, come come hit me up. You know what I'm saying? Slide to your DMs again. <laughs> Dude, you, are you trying to have a cat fight between Naya and Scarlet for your love? Is that what you're trying to say? Look at you. I know what you're thinking about later. Then come on, Philip. I, mean, I, I, I could throw some other. What names was that, Phil? Five one zero five five one zero five one seven. DM me for the rest. Yes, gotcha. Like, but yeah, man, it was just I, I, I just kind of laughed at it. I'm like, ha, this is the guy that's the, the supposed badass, and he's the champion on top of that. I mean, I was like, oh my it, it god. Was, it's one thing if he just showed up and made his debut on Raw, and this this happened, but. The fact he walked out with the NXT championship around his waist. Like, Brian, is this a sign that Vince does not care about NXT at all? Like, I, I, I'm trying to think what's, what's the message being sent out here? Like, I, I think he's definitely, I think he's saying, yeah, this is the main roster. NXT is officially not going to be looked at as a third brand anymore. Damn. Um, I think that this this came after him going down to the performance center too. He probably mm, went down right. there, seen all the talent, seen everybody, 
And maybe he wasn't impressed. I don't know. He, Cross got humbled. That's all this was. <laughs> he got humbled. And shout out Samoa Joe. Yeah, I saw your little appearance yesterday night. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, and here's the thing. Everyone's like bagging on. Oh, he lost in two minutes. He did lose to Jeff Hardy, who is a former WWE champion. Yep. I know he's past his prime. He's at the older part of his career, and yes. Hasn't been booked too strong lately. But hey, give Jeff Hardy credit. He is a former, like I said, WWE Six-time champ. world champ. Yeah, you know, an amazing tag team performer. He's That's a good person to lose to. But I was thinking, though, I was watching NXT this week, and I was like, William Regal, listen, I know you got Samoa Joe to fight your battles, but, dude, Jeff Hardy's the one you need to get to take out Karrion Cross here. <laughs> you know what? You know what made it weird for me watching this match? Uh, it was already bad enough, the entrance and, and – uh, it was the way Jeff Hardy won. He won oh. with a roll up with his feet on the ropes. He cheated. He cheated. <laughs> he didn't I, cheat. He outsmarted. He outsmarted. <laughs> the veteran outsmarted the okay. rook. That's all it is. I'm. I just. And, and if they told that story, guys, if they told that story that hey, Jeff Hardy just he outsmarted Cross and Cross Cross just needs to be hey, it was your first night, butterflies. You, I mean, he was smiling when Jeff Hardy's music hit for Christ. <laughs> but the thing is, like afterwards, they had the the Kevin guy come in for the interview post match, and oh. in the ring, he's like, oh, it, like he was pissed. He's like, oh, Jeff, I'm coming after you. So I guess Jeff Hardy's going to be his first feud, and they're probably going to have multiple rematches. But I'm like, what's the story here? What if well, Jeff beats him for the NXT title? <laughs> he, he just. I mean, like, I'm trying to, like, how can we spin this around into a positive? I mean, no, way, no matter how you look at it, like, oh, he's been undefeated in NXT since his debut, beginning of 2020. Like, Karrion Cross, if I remember correctly, he was, like, the last, before the pandemic, the last big, like, major free agent signing, like, indie star or, or I mean, it came from Impact and did some stuff with MLW, but, you know, remember... Pre-pandemic, there was like a bidding war. Like, where was Karrion Cross or Killer Cross going to end up? He's going to AEW. He's going to go into WWE. Like, he was one of the last non-signed to a major company that people were going after. Yeah. Um, NXT got him, and they treat him like a star. I mean, as far as not losing, I know he got hurt with the shoulder for a bit, but they've been so good to him as far as booking him. Gone in two minutes on Monday this week. I'm like, why? On I, I his birthday. Yeah, on his birthday too. That's <laughs> happy birthday, pal. Yeah, you know, you never went to your hometown or on your birthday. You, you guys know that. <laughs> it's, it's, you looked good out there. Good job, pal. That was <laughs> such good shit. Where the hell have you been? <laughs> But I just, I don't know. Like, I mean, we could talk about this till we're blue in the face, but I think that's the gist of it. It's like, we'll see how they bounce back. I mean, it's funny. On NXT the next night, they booked him like a total badass still. So it's like these two alternate universes of Karen Cross's character. I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's not good. I, I feel bad for him, even though I'm not the biggest Karen Cross fan. Um, it just, I, I still feel bad for the guy on his birthday, too, nonetheless. But yeah. uh, last thing from Raw, we'll just touch on real quick, is the main event. Rhea Ripley taking on Charlotte Flair. Another rematch. Um, uh, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Rhea wins uh, via DQ. I remember, um, oh, my God, I'm totally blanking on the... Uh, the finish they kicked her charlotte kicked her in the leg outside the ring i remember all that stuff but uh that's beyond the point uh so rhea ripley hits a rip tie on charlotte throws it back in the ring uh nikki ash or nikki ash formerly nikki cross music hits runs down cashes in her money to bank briefcase Tells Charlotte to get up. She jumps on top of the on the rope uh, and does a, a crossbody onto her. You know, flying with the cape on, pins her, becomes a new Raw Women's Champion. Brian, I I, I was shocked. We got a cash <sighs> in twenty less than or twenty four hours later. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm super happy. I mean, the crowd was super happy for Nikki. I mean, yeah. this is cool. I, I I think this is this is great. I mean, yeah, your thoughts on Nikki, uh, Raw Women's Champion now. 
It's bittersweet. It was bittersweet. <laughs> oh, that's right, that's right. You are a Charlotte Flair fan. That's I was right, on yeah. a Queen City ride, and then <laughs> Nikki Ash just had to say, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm happy for Nikki. Um, has she ever been Raw Women's Champion? No. no. This, okay. uh, this is it? Even on NXT, I think she was close, right? She challenged Asuka, if I remember correctly, at some good yeah, matches. They had that last woman standing yeah. match. The only yeah. title she's held is the uh, tag title. Okay. Oh, that's so then, right, with Alexa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then her 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 cashing in successfully, thank God. Uh, <laughs> even even though it was even though it was Charlotte, I'm, I'm glad it was a successful cash in. Um, and then not only her winning the championship, but winning the championship with the with the character and gimmick that she pitched and yeah. made come to life. It makes it that much more sweet. And it was cool to see. I, I wish they'd have gave her a little bit more time before they went off the air though. <laughs> yeah, I, I um I, I was oh yeah, that, that part too. But I was even kind of surprised how soon they cashed in. Yeah. Um I want to give a shout out to Steven Larson going in raw. They they brought up a good point. They were kind of hoping they could uh really focus more on the superhero character and her building up what it means for the superhero and like for example she's the super baby face and she's trying to help people first person she's trying to help is alexa bliss her former tag team partner who's like all evil now so she's trying to help reverse that and bring her back to being good maybe to kind of help show this superhero characters evolving before mm. cash in on another mm. heel charlotte or whatever um but who, i mean that maybe that's still something they can explore even though she's raw women's champion uh maybe that's the story like maybe alexis goes after it now and she's like you're my former best friend let, let me help you regardless of the title i yeah. think about that right i mean <laughs> to like heel or uh, you know uh, uh you know superhero villain dynamic like comic books i don't know we'll see if they do that um but uh philip one thing that was kind of eye-opening was charlotte when he cut she cut her promo so money in the bank after she won the raw women's title they said 14 time women's champion but on raw they like retcon it and said 11 time one time Disrespect. divas respect five times well, smackdown five so, time raw 11 yeah so, so your thoughts on yeah nxt between Karrion Cross getting buried and well, we we know the NXT title isn't a world championship. We know that. Well, is it officially now? I mean, WWE is like retconning it. No, I mean, guys, guys, guys. I mean, we, we we know we know. Come on now, everybody can't be a world champion. Come on, Jesus. So yeah, I mean, look, the, look. I mean, the Divas. Yes, that was the only title, the the raw title, the SmackDown title. Okay, so five of the the, the red and the blue each. So that's what ten. You throw in the Divas title, that's eleven. Yeah. The NXT title, twelve, thirteen, and then she had the tag titles with Oscar, so fourteen overall. That's what they meant. Is that what they meant? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. But, um, still, eleven, eleven world championships. Her and her father have the most in history. Well, I wonder if they retcon that. So now, because she was kind of rapidly approaching Flair, her, her dad's territory status. So I wonder if they kind of retcon it that way. They can give her some more title wins in the future, so it they could save that monument moment down the road. Yeah, they, yeah, they know. meant they meant fourteen overall. Okay, but uh, it's hey man, it's gonna be, it's gonna be something. I mean that that's really crazy though, right? Yeah, Brian, I, mean, I know you have to be ecstatic. The I most am. in history. I am the queen. Where's she from again? The queen city. (laughs) Who's okay. Who do you think is going to beat her dad? Cena or her? Like who's going to beat it first? (laughs) We're talking about the fictional record or the real one? The one Jerry Lawler has. What are you talking about? (laughs) Jerry Lawler. I think technically he's like a 20 something time champion, but back in the the 80s and 90s, he was losing the title like every other month. If you look at Wikipedia, like, that's from that uh, AWA. Yeah, that's AWA or in, 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 in Memphis stuff. Yeah, that, that doesn't really count. I know that's Come the on. thing. People are like, they don't, he's like, yeah, Jerry Lawler is like a twenty-something time world champion. I mean, on in his universe. Or okay, if that, okay, that's like me winning the APW title twenty-something times or the Bullet Cast <laughs> Championship. I mean, that's a real world championship. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> No, but I mean, like, like, are we talking like the the sixteen, the fictional one? Are we talking like the? I think it's, I think it's twenty one officially, like unofficially official. 
Is it I've looked it. I've looked it up. It's like 21, 21, it back, 22. It was back then before they had like social media and the internet and TV. Like no, somebody did like a a, a complete like they did their research. So it's 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 twenty one. Like Flair would drop it and then gain right back from Harley. Like, yeah, like, in Australia or whatever it was. He's like those even overseas. said it on WWE TV. Like man, it's like twenty one or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, no, but like overall, Raw. Was just good to see the fans back and Cena, Brian, as you said earlier, it just felt more normal again and just like this is what WWE is known for. And so I don't know. It was just it was still a very fun episode overall and just a lot of stuff to positive to look forward to on the road to SummerSlam now, which is gonna be really cool. I'm looking forward to it. So uh yeah, we'll see how it goes uh next week's episode of Raw. Um uh, all right, let's power through uh AEW Dynamite last night. Um uh I do want to start off real quick. I want to give a special shout out. Congrats to Thunder Rosa. It was officially tweeted out earlier on AEW social media uh, handles that she's officially all elite. Uh, Philip, um, you and I, we've seen Thunder Rosa wrestle at West Coast. God, before the pandemic happened. And we got to hang out, talk to her for a bit after the show. Um, but finally, it is official. I don't know when her NWA contract ended. It must have just ended recently. I read, I read something that Tony Khan actually bought her out of her contract. Really? Yeah, I forgot. I forgot where I read it from, but it was it was a pretty credible. Okay, do that Twitter that, account. So that, that I mean, I mean, that's true. I mean, good for him. She was yeah. there so much. I thought she was already signed. I, okay. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and, but I'm very happy for AEW's women's division because she is a star. She's, yeah, they need um, her. <laughs> yeah, they, they really do need her. Like, real talk, they do need her. But uh, yeah. uh, no, I'm, I'm happy for her. And uh, uh, apparently her it, when she was at Slammiversary for Impact, that was just a one-time thing. So she's all in, no pun intended, of AEW. But uh, <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, so let's talk about the opening segment here, the opening match. Uh, Jericho, his uh, what's the term? It was the first, the, the labors, the, the labors of Jericho, the labors of Jericho. So this was the first of the five. I uh, took on Sean Spears, who's the chairman of AEW. He got to use a chair, but Jericho was not allowed to. Good opening match here. It was fun, you know, seeing the two of them go at it. Um, Jericho did pick up the victory, so he checked off the first of five steps here. But MJF was doing commentary. So, Brian, we see uh, MJF get off on the, the commentary desk, grabs a microphone, cuts his promo, and reveals, all right, your next step, or step number two of your five uh, labors of Jericho, you're taking on someone sadistic crazy, I'm paraphrasing here. Um, so, oh, actually, I have the, the quote right here. <laughs> next week on Dynamite, labor number two will be a no disqualification match against the most sadistic, most twisted, most criminal human being to ever step foot inside the ring. Nick freaking Gage. <laughs> Uh, crowd popped and Nick Gage showed up, walked out. I mean, your thoughts on Nick Gage uh, showing up in AEW? Yeah, I was surprised, but then not surprised. I mean, I guess I was surprised because I mean, it's Nick Gage, right? But yeah. then I, I, I wasn't surprised because I said this on my show last night. I think that <clears throat> like AEW, like they're the they're the popular ones right now. They are doing the cool stuff. You know, they're doing the cool things. And Nick Gage is cool to a lot of their audience, their fan base. He's cool to them. So why not bring in Nick Gage? They're bringing in everybody else. You know, I I made a joke and said that that Tony Khan will literally hire anybody. Anybody could wrestle on AEW. (laughs) Dark, dark elevation, dynamite. It doesn't matter. If you wrestle and you got a little bit of a following, or even if you don't, come on. (laughs) Of hey, course. If, if that's the case, you and I, let's go train for six months. The new, <laughs> the new nation will wrestle the acclaim. The is her. <laughs> oh, my God. Or, or maybe, we should, maybe we should be NBC. I don't know. <laughs> NBC. Oh, my God. I thought you and uh, – Philip, you and I were going to be uh, – uh, Oh, oh Dun- what? <laughs> what, salt and pepper? <laughs> or Dudley Choc- Boys, Dudley Boys 2.0. Chocolate and vanilla? I don't know. What do you, what do you want to do, dude? <laughs> Come on, come on, get a little mix of the world, baby. Salt salt get, pepper. I'll tell you, get the tables, man. Get the tables. Get them, bro. But yeah, I mean, Nick Gage. MDK, Nick Gage, MDK all day. Um, uh, 
I guess, you know, <laughs> actually a very, he's like, he, like when he speaks, like in like an interview, he's very, I don't know. What, what is it? I, I want to say intelligent, but, but like, he doesn't sound like that. He really doesn't like, <laughs> listen, listen to the Chris Van Vliet interview. I'm like, Oh, Okay. Yeah, man, I'm Nick Gage, man. I can't. I can't. <laughs> okay. But, but, no, but people really love this guy. Yeah, he has, it, he has a big following. Well, you got to give AEW credit, Brian, as you mentioned. Like mm-hmm. they they have their ear to the ground and knowing what's cool out there, and will yep. try to capitalize on that and bring it in somehow into the fold. Mm-hmm. And listen, Nick Gage in the last six months. I guess, or even longer, but, uh, but in the last six months, you know, with the Dark Side of the Ring episode on him, his stock has really gone up, and he's gone a lot more mainstream. Also with the David Arquette stuff, and just stuff he's done in the last couple of years, his stock has really gone up, and they're like, this guy is someone we can bring in for... I mean, I know he's uh, the GCW champion, so he's still with them. Uh, so they're probably, yeah, get a pop, get people talking, buzzing, talking about like we, like we are. It, it's gonna be interesting though how they're gonna use him because he is known for the death match. So is him and Jericho gonna have a death match? I mean, or is he gonna actually just wrestle? Can he just wrestle normally? I I, I don't well, know. It's, it's a no disqualification, so it's gonna be very interesting to see what Jericho's gonna do. I'm scared dude, for Jericho, dude. Philip, you know he's our best friend, man. You know he's our party boy, Jericho. Oh, Brian does not know about that. We gotta tell him afterwards. Y- yeah, man. We'll, uh, we'll 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 tell you after the show. Yeah, we'll tell. You. Yeah, no, we party with Jericho. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> no, we, no, we hang out and drink with him. It's fun. Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Philip's face, though. He was like, "Oh, I'm here." Oh, <laughs> sorry. That's one of my favorites, bro. I love, I love that guy. I love that man. He's, he's drinking. Philip and him are drinking Grey Goose together. It's still the best <laughs> night. Oh I only drink God. Grey Goose now because of that night. It's Jericho. Oh anyway, my so, goodness. Uh, uh, no, so um, it, it's it's like a, listen. I know Nick Gage has a big following, and uh, a lot of people are excited. I will say this. Let me ask you this, Brian. It was okay. So there's the five labors of Jericho. This is like, it's like a video game. He has to beat every level before he gets to MJF. Nick Gage, how crazy this guy is. Wouldn't it be better for like, you know, speaking of video games, like a final boss, wouldn't it be better if he was like stage number five? And like, there you have like the crazy death match that Jericho's not known for experience. You know what I mean? Like maybe save him yeah. for later Yeah. In, in this challenge. I, I felt mean, like I felt like uh, maybe Nick Gage is a little too early. I mean, because at, at, at this point now, him being number two, you kind of know how this is going to turn out. Like, yeah, Jericho, Jericho's not going to lose at number two. I know exactly. No, and, and, and I mean, you would think that you'd be able to get away with with the disqualification, but there's no DQ. Yeah, so how there's got to be a winner. I'm trying to think, how can Jericho win? Because my only concern is, okay, you bring Nick Gage in, and theoretically, he's probably going to lose to Jericho. So you have the Game Changer uh, or a GCW champion come in and lose in another promotion. I don't know how that's going to make that other promotion look. It's an yeah. indie promotion. It's fine. Yeah, but it's like, how do you book in a way that Jericho wins, but Nick Gage still looks strong? I think MJF's going to try to interfere and cost... Uh, Nick Gage the match, and then Nick Gage will probably put Jer, uh, not Jerick, probably put MJF through a table. Or Turn something. on him, yeah, yeah. Maybe he MJF gets involved, distracts Nick Gage. Nick Gage gets rolled up or something, and then he beats the crap out of MJF, something like that. Okay, maybe that's a safe way to, of booking this. I don't know. I, like I said, I just was like, uh, I mean, I, it's cool. Like I said, I'm not a huge Nick Gage fan. Like Deathmatch wrestling is a little, a little extreme for me to watch, yeah. but. I get, I get his appeal to uh, 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 to the uh, niche audience out there, and like he brings some extra eyeballs to to them. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I hope Jericho does not get a pizza cutter to that forehead. Oh, man. I'm hoping not. <laughs> hey, that's not even the worst one I've seen, bro. He, you, are you guys familiar with? Uh, was it Alley Catch? Her? Are yeah. you familiar with her work? She used to be Alley Cat. She just wrestled as a cat. It's actually funny. Yeah, she had a she had a death match with Nick Gage, and he he put a screwdriver in her head. What? Like it, it went in. I was like, oh my god. Jeez, yeah. I yeah, don't know, man. But 
Um, uh, so next we saw, um, you know, uh, uh, the elite hunter, Frankie Gazarian, aka he looks to me like the Punisher from the comics. Like that's what he's <laughs> kind of looking like. Um, you take on Doc Gallows of uh, the elite. Uh, Doc Gallows gets the victory though, but the big takeaway was after the match. Uh, Hangman comes out with his drink, uh, gets in Kenny Omega's face, uh, and Don Callis and the other elite guys. I like how Kenny Omega had a big bandage on his forehead, selling the injuries from his, uh, D- no DQ match with, um, with Sammy Callahan at Slammiversary for Impact Wrestling. Um, but, you know, it, it's Brian, I, I'm curious, you know, since we haven't had a chance to talk about this with you, what do you think about the early stages of setting up this match with uh, Kenny and Hangman? So last the last couple of weeks, they've really been like going all in on this uh, potential matchup here. So what do you think of Hangman and Kenny, o- Kenny Omega dynamic right now? Yeah, <clears throat> so it's interesting because they're not really facing like they're not really touching each other, which is good. Right. Um, Both sides have, have like a a lot of support. Hangman's got the dark order. Kenny's got the elite, you know, and I don't know, man. Part of me is kind of like, I don't know if you can drag this out all the way to what all out or Mm -hmm. whenever this is supposed to take place. Yeah. Um, but then on the other side, it's just like, hey, I mean, if they keep kind of going back and forth and doing the promos and building that anticipation and, mm-hmm. and maybe, I mean, a hangman's already over as over as you could be, right? I yeah. mean, yeah. I don't know how much over he could be, but I don't know. I just don't want him to get stale. I don't want him to wrestle. I don't want him to touch each other yet, but I I know that don't they got like a, a, a six man or something coming up. Right, the five on five. five. Okay, five on five. So if they, whoever wins that, if Hangman in the new the new order, I was gonna say, sorry, the dark I'm a 90, order, dark order. Sorry, I'm a '90s kid, NWO for <laughs> for life. But yes. uh, the the dark order, if they win, they all get their respected championship matches. Okay. Um. So for for Hangman with Kenny, and then two members of Dark Order for against the Young Bucks for the tag title. So. And I think they said, was that going to be next week or the week after? Like, it's coming up. I mean, next yeah, I think week. it's next week. So, because Fighter Fest, this was night two. And then so, Fight, Fight for the Fallen was Fight next week. Fallen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that makes sense. Kind of a theme show. So, they got to do something man. big on there. Uh, teams of five strive to stay alive. It's like back in the old Survivor Series days. But I know, but Brian, you brought up a good point. Like, do not <laughs> let them touch each other. That's yep. something WWE, unfortunately, does way too much. These guys have matches on Raw or SmackDown multiple times before the pay-per-view and like yep. it's just not as special so yep. that's something i'm with i'm with you aew i think does a pretty good job but like let's save this for a big moment um so yeah well it just was because what all out is going to be what in six seven weeks now so yeah i'm with you how are they going to keep this fresh before you get that burnout factor so um i do want to mention so the aew women's uh, championship match. Britt Baker taking on Nyla Rose. I didn't think that was that good of a match. I don't know about you guys. Nyla Rose seemed like winded and was just <laughs> like she wasn't kicking out like that well. She just looked like yeah. like she was like she looked tired. She was yeah. out of breath. Um, but Britt Baker, Brian, dude, she is so over. Like yeah. she's a heel, but like everyone loves her. Uh, Philip, you know, your girl Rebel, you know, she's a former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. She, the crowd was into that. So I'm sure you were at home cheering her on. Hey, Matt, Dallas, they were so lucky. They got Raw and Dynamite. That's true. Yeah. I was never, I was never that lucky when I lived in Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, you shout out Rebel. He, I mean, we, we already know. Shout out. I, I, I'll have to tell Brian that story when, when we go off air. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I was just like, oh man, what's what's happening here? It was like so, I, sloppy to me. It when was a, a sloppy w, match. When AEW first burst on the scene, I was like, oh yeah, Nyla Rose, that's their first champion. It's an obvious choice. Um, yeah, it was just it, it was it second was sl- second champion. No, right? I, I said like in my mind before the oh, champion, oh, okay. I was like, yeah. that should be the choice. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, it was just kind of sloppy. But I mean, Britt Baker, a credit to her. And Brandon said this on Bullet Cats earlier. When when Britt's not in there with somebody that's 
above her level or or when she's even in there with the person that's the same level as her, it doesn't really work well, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, like Thunder Rosa elevated her. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, so, yeah. I yeah. mean, now that she's signed, let's run that back for the next two months. I'm cool oh, totally. It. No, that, that's guaranteed going to happen. But, yeah, when Britt's in there with somebody that's, like, at her level or below, then it's not that great. Yeah, and Nyla Rose, unfortunately, she, she hasn't been on TV as much. Uh, but, yeah, I thought this match was just kind of sloppy. It's unfortunate. I mean, Britt Baker is so over, though. The fans just ate it up anyway. And so she got the pop when she won the match already, but uh, um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, but Brian, I want to ask you your thoughts. So next up, we saw uh, Andrade El Idolo. Uh-huh. Philip, did I say it right? <laughs> did I pronounce it right? Andrade El Idolo. <laughs> he comes out. It looks like Vicky Guerrero, not with him anymore, as, as far as we can tell. Um, he announces he has a new executive consultant. Is that the term, Philip? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but introduce Chavo Guerrero Jr. So, Brian, your thoughts on uh, uh, Chavo Guerrero is now all elite. Another, another. I said it earlier. It's the popular, the cool kids. I said it on the show last night too. It's cool kids table. You know, <laughs> like, hey, let's let's bring in Chavo. And again, Tony Khan calling the audible, realizing that Vicky and Andrade may not be working out. Yeah. Um, so, hey, let's, let's bring in Chavo. Let's, what, what do you think of, of Andrade's run so far in AEW? It's been a tad underwhelming to me. Like, yeah. I know he's had one match, but he hasn't really done that much to be like, oh my God. Like, maybe yeah. this is, maybe this is why Vince let him go. Right. And I feel this, I feel, I feel the same way. And I think that Tony Khan is trying to prove, hey, Andrade is a star. He can cut promos. He can do this just as well as anybody. And I'm going to show yeah. you, but it's not really working out. Maybe this last night was like a little bit of a restart as far mm-hmm. as, okay, listen, Vicky's not working. Um, let, how can we fix this? Okay. Yeah. Chavo, who obviously connected, related to her. So Chavo can be his mouthpiece now and kind of talk from, cause Andrade, he was talking and I know, there have been reports he's been really working on his English. Like he takes that very seriously. He really yeah. wants to to not let that be uh to hold him back from anything, wrestling here in America. So he does take pride in trying to get better. Uh but with that being said, you know, even when I was on the mic, I felt the crowd was kinda like drowning him out. Cause yep. uh uh the death triangle, all three of them come out and the crowd was eating it up, cheering them on, especially Penta, uh Cerro Miedo, all that yeah. stuff. And they were cheering him on until Andrade's trying to respond, and they were drowning him out. And so I think Chavo, Philip, I don't know if I'm reading too much into this. It looked like he grabbed the mic to kind of make the save and yeah. kind of take control of the, the of the segment. Yeah, I'm glad he did. Pentagon's not my favorite person at the moment. Um, but, <laughs> but, but yeah, um, <laughs> Chavo will help him, man. He, he will help him a lot. And Tony Khan's buying the rights to all this music. He couldn't get Ooh Chavo. He really couldn't do that. <laughs> I would. You know how hard that crowd would have popped if Ooh Chavo. <laughs> <laughs> If that came on the airwaves, that would have been great. But I, I, honestly, I do think uh, Chavito Classic Junior will help out Andrade quite a bit, mm-hmm. and you know maybe maybe this will be what can catapult him to uh, stardom. Yeah, I, I I think this is a good, like I said, a little bit of a restart. And Chavo, I think, can be very positive. Like you know, he's been successful with Glow and other stuff outside of our. In the entertainment world. So I wonder, you know, Brian, could Chavo maybe be like a good positive influence for the locker room or creative? Like, mm-hmm. I think his mind, he could be maybe help AEW in some ways. That's like some of these like older legend guys, I think could be a big help behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I definitely agree with that. You know, Chavo, even his energy when he came out, aside from the Andrade stuff, the first thing he said was, <laughs> Man, it, it, this is the place to be. And everyone in the back, and blah 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 blah. I'm so happy to be here, and every that's all we've heard uh, aside from everything else is that it's so positive and backstage, and everyone's yeah. having fun, and and everyone's happy. So I think Chavo will definitely definitely add to that. Yeah, absolutely. So I, mean, um, I think every I, I think everyone will just respect him too. You know, I mean, he's Chavo Guerrero. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think it's gonna be good for everyone involved. And like I said, I, I do want Andrade to succeed. Like, yeah. 
I want to see the Andrade we saw in NXT took on Johnny Gargano, like all that stuff. I want that back on on a bigger level, like TNT and AEW. So I, you know, I want to be optimistic. This is like I said, a little bit of a restart. And uh, how badass would it be? He takes out every one of the Death Triangle guy. He's <laughs> like he one by one, he takes them all out. Yeah. Uh, that'd be kind of cool. I just think that'd be awesome. All right, main event time. Uh, it was uh, a Texas death match for the IWGP US title. Moxley taking on Lance Archer. Uh, Philip, did you see their first match or, or, or their previous death match, Texas death match for Wrestle Kingdom like a year and a half ago? Did you see that one? It was on my birthday. Of course I watched it. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, um, it was a good match. I, I, I mean, I, God, it's been so long since I've seen the other ones. So I couldn't really compare the two off the top of my head. It but, was only uh, last year. A year and a half ago, man. Dude, I can't remember what I did last week. I know. Co- COVID ramped everything up. It really I know, exactly. Did. I can't remember what I did this morning. Jesus. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, from what I remember from the last one, it, I mean, it was cool. It was fine. I mean, given it was like 3 a.m. and I wasn't really feeling it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was all right. This one, it was it was cool. Yeah, yeah. Brian, yeah. how about you? What you think of how this main event played out here? It was, you know, I'm going to be honest. It was a good main event, but I, I was a little just like, oh, God, I'm tired of seeing these death matches, these hardcore matches. Yeah. These, I mean, how many of these how many of these cardboard barbed wire table spots am I going to see? Like, the, <laughs> it's just too much. It's a lot. Well, and the use of blood, too. Like, listen, mm-hmm. I, I like seeing blood if it adds to the story, to the drama. But like AEW really be tapping into the blood a lot. Like yeah. it, it's like a little excessive. And even here, I think it was at one point Lance was on the ground and Jake the Snake comes walking over. And by the way, Shad, I, I, I like Jake's shirt. It had like the snake on the back. It was like a cool designer shirt. Yeah. But he's standing there and the camera's behind them. And you can see, I think Lance was like cutting himself, you know, Kate, sorry to break cafe, but mm-hmm. you know, setting up the blood spot. But I was like, Get the camera shot away from him. Like, don't focus yeah. on that. Like, you know, focus on Moxley in the ring. But uh, it still was fun. They got the fork involved, and you know, um, you know, they 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 went around using uh, all the different spots, and then sure enough, uh, Lance power or uh, or choke slam Moxley <laughs> into the tub, uh, the two tables on the outside covered in barbed wire. Uh, and then Moxley just couldn't get up and get back into the ring in time. And so uh, Lance Archer is now the IWGP U.S. champion, I think, for the second time. I think it's his second Yes, he had it before. Um, but, yeah, Brian, your thoughts on, yeah, Lance Archer. The, the one spot I did like was uh-huh. when Lance Archer picked up the fan or the security guard yes. and he just yes. threw him on Moxley. Yes. I was like, yo, is that, is that a legit <laughs> fan? Like, what's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> so that was cool. That, that was cool. I, I, I like stuff like that. And that's, again, like, if you got to plant someone there to make them look yeah. like a fan, or just, yeah. I mean, to get a pop out of the crowd, that was cool. I was just thinking, like, yeah, you go to AEW show, you never know what you're going to see. You could probably see Nick Gage. You might see Tommy in debut, yep. or or you might get thrown. <laughs> you might get picked up from Lance Archer and thrown in the Moxley. You never know what you're going to get right. at a John Mo- or at a AEW show. Um I will admit, I'm happy for Lance Archer because, you know, his run in AEW has been hit or miss. I think AEW, they brought on all these monsters. They start them out really strong, and then they ultimately lose to a baby face. In the end, like Lance Archer lost to Moxley. Um, Did he also lose to Cody, right, for the TNT championship? They were in the finals that tournament last year. So, like, and then Miro originally, I mean, like, um, I'm trying, O'Brien Cage. Yeah. So, like, they have these big guys that come in, they start them out really hot, and then within, like, a couple months, they lose to a baby face, and then they kind of lose all their momentum. So, Lance Archer, I really felt like, what's he going to do here? Like, I felt like he's just there cutting promos once in a while. He wasn't really doing anything. And, listen, we know Miro's the TNT champion. He's not losing that title anytime soon. Kenny Omega is not losing that title t- to Lance Archer. Like, he has bigger plans in mind. So for Lance Archer, I'm happy he's winning the IWGP U.S. Championship because that gives him something. Um, He has connections to New Japan, obviously. And Moxley, real talk, you know, he has a baby at home now, so maybe he can't go to, like, Japan and defend that title. So give to someone who could make the trip overseas and quarantine, do all that procedure stuff. So This is why you don't have children. 
You can't defend championships. <laughs> Philip is going to be just a, a nomad defending his bullet cast championship wherever he goes. I mean, that's why it has a couple of scrapes on it, man. I was I was a traveling world champion. I was on my Harley race ish. You feel me? <laughs> king Harley race. <laughs> You're the king version. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you finally recognized. You're welcome. Acknowledge me, Huey. I'll stack Acknowledge you. me. I'm gonna stack you on your title. I don't think you, I don't think you want to do that. Yeah. I can lift you up, man. I'll take you down. <laughs> You know I can. Let's go train at East Bay Pro. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Great wrestling school. (laughs) Absolutely. It's great. I love those people. Um, So, uh, um, um, but yeah, no, Lance Archer, it's great. I mean, he can go to New Japan strong. He could probably go overseas to Japan, defend the title there. Um, It's just great. It gives him something to do. And it's once again, further establishing the working relationship between AEW and New Japan. Uh, But then Brian, who was... um, Haku's son, other son. Yeah, Hikaleo. Uh, Hikale- okay, because, yeah, so he's the, is he the younger brother of the Grills of Destiny? Is that, is that who? I think or, he is the younger. Yeah, he's, he's brother, the youngest. Yeah. He's the youngin. How tall is he? That guy's like, what, 6'8 or something? <laughs> something like that. Yeah. He just walked over the ropes and I'm was like, face damn. to face, nose to nose with Lance. Like, and he's doing like <laughs> Bullet Club stuff. I'm like, yeah. oh, damn, this is <clears throat> awesome. So, um, I guess we're going to get to see some more New Japan guys wrestling on AEW. Yeah. Give it to me. Yeah. Third time in a row next week, too, that the IWGP U.S. title will be oh, really? defended. Third time That's in a row because it was defended this week and last week. Okay. Dude, it's kind of okay. crazy. Dude, I love it. That's going to be great. I Yeah, give it to me. It just – and once again, listen, going back to what we talked about earlier, with, you know, who New Japan wanted to work with, AEW or WWE, I think on paper you'd be like, oh, yeah, they should work with WWE, the biggest company in the world. It would give more eyeballs potentially to them. But on a more realistic standpoint, AEW probably makes more sense because creatively they could probably be more um, – it's more reasonable. If you have WWE, they would probably dominate creative and like New Japan guys will probably lose all the time or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think – as, a- as they should. <laughs> Roman, <laughs> Roman, Roman would be stacking the entire Bullet Club. That's what he would do. As long as Roman obliterates Will Ospreay in 20 seconds, I'm fine with it. Okay. But I'm just saying, AEW working with New Japan probably makes more sense because then, yeah, you get the benefit of them working together. You get TNT, the big cable network. They can work with Impact. Uh, They got New Japan Strong stuff. So New Japan, they can have their foot in multiple American promotions, North American promotions. So... um, Nonetheless, I'm super happy to see more IWGP title defenses on, on Dynamite. Oh, yeah. And, and it might be even cool, you know, once Rampage starts, you know, keep in mind, Rampage, oh, that's what I forgot to mention earlier, was, you know, maybe with CM Punk, Daniel Bryan coming, and we're worried about roster spots for the younger talent, maybe Rampage can be that show, maybe some of the younger talent gets more TV time, and maybe some of the New Japan stuff can get more love there. I don't know, I just, I'm trying to be optimistic of these working relationships, these new yeah. free agent signings, it will just help take AEW to an even higher level. So oh, yeah. I'm super happy, man, for all that yeah. stuff. So, uh, Brian, anything else from Dynamite that stood out for you? You want to shout out, mention? Uh, uh, I think I think we covered the, the basics of it all. I think we did. I know it's been running long. I apologize for running long. Oh, no, nah, no worries. <laughs> no, nah, I, I think that's it. Um, other uh, than the fact that Tony Khan is... Is just creating a, a playground of popularity over there. <laughs> yeah, and if you think about it, remember he cut that promo uh, like last month or, or a couple months ago, saying like he was really confident that uh, New Japan was going to work with them. So he must knew he had New Japan yeah. on his side mm-hmm. to cut a promo like that. Um, was it you know, like he was saying like he was the number one con or something? I forgot yeah. what he exactly said, but yeah. Um, I give him credit, man. He's uh, yeah, very confident man, and uh, it's going to be all good stuff. So, all right, on that note, let's start wrapping things up. Uh, Brian, I'll let you go first. You have the honor since you are our guest tonight. Where can the Clicksters follow you online, listen to you on a regular basis? You guys can follow and find me at Within the Ropes on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you guys subscribe to Within the Ropes podcast any and everywhere you listen to your podcast subscribe to the youtube page just look up within the ropes got some cool shit coming over there just you know just stay tuned stay locked in i, I like promise. your logo i like your logo a lot thank it's very you. cool it's very thank cool you. thank <laughs> you it's 
it's it's it's a journey. It's it's, it's man. It's like we talked about earlier. Everyone's got a wrestling podcast, you know. <laughs> yeah, real talk. I like listen and um, you know, Philip. You know, you and I a couple weeks ago we were talking about how it's really cool. Like we're you know, when things starting to open up, and you know, specifically here in the Bay Area, Northern California, all the re- independent wrestling promotions are starting to get back going again. And there's like a new breed of talent. They're starting to get booked. They're from this area. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing all these guys perform. But also, there's a lot of amazing, great content. Uh, uh, producers, podcasters, YouTubers, uh, photographers, vloggers, whatever you want to say. It. There's there's a lot of great content people out there. And so, Brian, uh, you're definitely one of them. So I definitely encourage everyone to subscribe to your stuff. Follow it. Just uh, like I said, I'm looking at your YouTube page right now. Just what you have up there already awesome your turnaround is amazing uh like you said kudos to you mad props for all the the, the hustle i told phil you. you know I, I respect philip and hustle he does there he, he does with with the bullet cast so same thing for you so thank uh, you man appreciate awesome. that philip how about you where can all the clicks just find you online well I'm, I'm glad you said some nice things about me huey i mean i mean you're gonna, you got i mean brian Philip, brian what, what i was gonna say you know i love you man like i i told brian off the air before you joined us uh while you were busy it was a jack in a box or whatever you're Bro, like the little brother get... listen no you're like the little brother i never had man you know i'm the youngest oh, well, one he did say him. that he did say that i got proof so okay well, i love well, you man I, so I, I will put oh, you man. over it's a big hug fest now apparently with a tear in my eye, this is the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a little 92 rumble. Oh, uh, but I thank you, Huey. And, and Brian, man, you know, the turnaround's quick when you're from the Queen City, baby. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> and, when I'm the Bullock, and when I'm the current reigning defending Bullock cast heavyweight champion of the world. I'm going to tell you, Brian, uh, Brandon was not happy. He legit I'm was happy. not. Fresh blood's no, no, always good. He, he, I'll tell you guys the details off air, but he was he was not happy. No, I'm gonna say no, no, no. With Brian, okay, Brian. Hey, if you can get a photo with that belt, I, I'd be so I, I'd be shocked. Oh, do Philip Philip keeps that in his house and doesn't let anyone see it. I brought it to West Coast Pro. I know we forgot to get a photo together with that one. Oh, we were okay, sitting well, there. I- I forgot. You're, you're at West Coast Pro again, right? I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back. Okay, good. All right. Bring okay. And Brian, you got to show up, though. I got to show up. I got to. Dude, the next, yeah, West Coast. Oh, <sighs> no, dude. It, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, he, he should sit there with it on his shoulder. No, but uh, shout out West Coast. They got their next big show. It's going to be Rocky Romero and Carl Fredericks taking on the West Coast wrecking crew of uh, – uh, 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 Royce Isaac and uh, Jarrell Nelson yeah. and uh, Royce Isaics. Yeah, That's it's gonna be, be it's gonna be a happening, man. As Jimbo likes to say, Jacob Fatu, Jacob Fatu's yeah, gonna be there. Dude, I'm excited, but I, I was supposed to be promoting my stuff. Right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Bullet Cast on Instagram and YouTube at Bullet Cast on Twitter. Um, follow me personally at Heel Antoine H E E L A N T W I N E on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Naya Rebel. Kim Kardashian, J Lo, Halle Berry. That's my favorite fruit, by the way. Mariah Carey, uh, Selma Hayek. Um, who Dude, who am I missing? Jennifer Anderson, um, Nia Long. Um, Man, it's longer I'm, than your intro I, now. I'm I'm just trying to get them all out there in, ca- in case in case you know you never know you never know. Damn. Man, um, what am I gonna do yeah. with you, man? Yeah, guys, diamonds are forever. So is the microphone messiah. Good night, everybody. All right, I'll make it quick because Phil took up all my airtime. But uh, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding, man. I'm sarcastic. Uh, I'm Baby Huey. Follow me on Facebook at Baby Huey Official, Twitter and Instagram at Baby Huey83. For everything else, at In the Click on social media, please subscribe to us, rate, comment, share the podcast, help with the whole algorithm thing. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Link in bio has all of our merch and uh, in the click at gmail.com. But Brian, once again, thank you. We would love to have you on again uh, on a regular, man. It's good. Good having some fresh blood, fresh voices and perspective on this thing. I appreciate you guys having me on, man. It's truly an honor. Had a lot of fun and I will be back. <laughs> You're welcome. And on that note, let's go home. And that's the bottom line because Huey said so.